Hey, welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over uh, Graph Mapper, which is like a, which you can find in Grasshopper. Um, Graph Mapper right here. It is a, a, basically it's a numeric way of assigning, of remapping um, any sort of number that you have, lists of numbers. Um, and it allows you to visually visualize uh, how these numbers will be remapped. So just a quick example, let's just create um, construct point up here, construct point, graph mapper. Let's, let's make a series of these points. The way you use graph mapper is it appears as this blank slate and then you right click, go down to graph types, and then you can apply any one of these, um, some of them. So there's sort of like mathematical, different mathematical uh, functions such as like sine and sine simulation and square root. I'm just going to use a Bezier to begin with. Um, anyways, let's, so now what it's going to do is it's not actually going to give us any numbers, which we can access by uh, double slash and then plug in. So there's no data actually coming out of this because this requires entry of numbers into um, the graph mapper. And then it's going to evaluate those numbers along the X axis and wherever it intersects with the curve that's within here is what number is going to be outputted for that same one. So for example, let's use the um, range component. And what this does is it's going to give us 10 numbers in between 0 and 1, which is good because as you can see here on the uh, y domain, it's between 0 and 1 and the x domain is here also 0 to 1. And so you can change these by double right clicking. You can go in and you can actually change these. Um, but I recommend never doing that. It, you'll never be able to get to it. For example, if you have 21 numbers coming into here, you're gonna have to ch and you're gonna, you'll have to go in, double click here and change this to you know 21, which, which will be really inconvenient when you need, for example, that number changes to 22 or 23, and all of a sudden you're, you, you, it doesn't fit within this chart. Um, it would be nice if Grasshopper had something that allowed you to switch those domains, but it doesn't. So, so, so what you always want to do is remap into the graph mapper. Um, let's move these over here. So you want to remap all your numbers that you're inputting into between zero and one. Okay. So as you can see, now we have just put 10 numbers and you can see now those are represented by these 10 uh, lines showing where on the X axis it's going to meet. So now what it'll do, instead of being 0 0.1234, etc., it'll be 0 0.014, which is over here, to be, you know, at the ninth one, it's up here. And so what we can do with these, and this is really, really powerful because we can start controlling. Um, numbers um, and, and arrays of points and lines and whatever with these uh, with this visual representation and, and we can easily manipulate and see how this has a consequence on um, numbers. So right now I'm going to show you how to sort of make like a grid of points. Yeah. Um, and then later I'll show you how to uh, make a, a gradient of points, which I mean, essentially is uh, you can, it's like how to remap a, a series of points into a gradient like thing. Um, Anyway, so what, what you're going to be able to do is, uh, so what this is going to output is a series of numbers that are also between 0 and 1. So we inputted a series of numbers between 0 and 1, and we're outputting another 10 numbers between 0 and 1. But let's, but I really don't want those numbers to be in between 0 and 1, so let's remap. Um, so what this does is it has a source domain and a target domain. Because you're outputting from here, it's already going to have that 0 to 1 as a source domain, which is perfect. All we need to do is uh, construct domain, which is here, plug that in, and now let's go, you know, uh, 0 point, um, or let's do 1.15, control C, control V, 1.15, 1.15. Out. So all the numbers are now going to be 1.15, but if I draw that back, you can see now that now we have complete control where all these numbers are going to be remapped to, um, to, to between 0 and 1.92. And so this is really powerful because now 
without changing that, we're, we're all okay. And I can also change, by the way, the number of points. So let's say let's do 15 rather than 10 and put that here. It'll always, because you're inputting zero to one on this side and you're exporting that zero to one and then remapping, it always allows this thing to work regardless of, uh, regardless. Okay, so here I'm, I'm just gonna show you how to create, create a quick um, gradient. So what I'm just gonna do is Control C, Control V, um, copy this, and what we can now do is just put this into Y. And then let's just do it again. Control C, Control V, and put this into Z. And now what you're gonna to need to do is that at least in one of these, you're gonna to have to graft it. And what you've done now is now we have this nice series of points. I don't like how the Z one, I do not like how it's a, uh, a bezier. So what I'm gonna do is actually make it a um, sign. And we're gonna we're gonna bring that back down, and we're gonna remap that to be much lower, much smoother. So as you can see here, then let's just um, just to visualize. Let's make a surface. Uh, interpolate. Oh no, sorry. In interpolate. Um, so now we have this series of curves and we can easily um, loft. We're gonna have to flatten this, but we can easily loft this into be a uh, surface. And so this right now, both X and Y are obeying the same um, law, but we can now manipulate one or the other and create sort of like really interesting um, really interesting shapes and, and I mean we have total control so we can so we can uh, you know use these Gaussian um, for blurs or we can do uh, Perlin which is a noise function okay, let's stretch this guy out so it actually occupies the whole um... Ooh, the, oh this is uh, oh this is just I, I get it I don't know what it's doing um, let's not do God or uh, Perlin that's a bit messy but you can, but as you can see, you can sort of manipulate each one of these and it'll always, um, and it'll always sort of like come back so you can uh, control this. Now, one thing that I find is really powerful when using these uh, graph mappers is um actually is actually multiplying a series with another series to increase sort of the complexity so right now this is controlling the the z depth on these points right so here we have it's this one is controlling the z but what if we applied multiple graphs overlaying each other what would happen then so for example i'm just going to control z control v and I'm gonna apply this one to have um, sort of some sort of noise. So I'm just gonna use Perlin. Um, and let's amplify that a little bit. Uh, that should be okay. And now what I'm gonna do is actually um, multiply. So now I'm gonna multiply the numbers outputted from here and out an output from this one. So, and it's the same amount of numbers, right? Because we have the same inputs, 15. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, so what, so if I use this, for example, you're gonna have this overlay of these two um, graphs merging at some, at some points. How, what is the actual multiplication value of these two numbers at, at one, two, three, and all the way up to 15. But if you want to inverse the, um, but I'd actually love to get the the noise appearing in this direction. So what I'm going to do is flip this matrix. So now rather than being displayed, being arrayed this way, it's going to array itself across the points that way. And you can actually do this. And now we can see how this noise is being multiplied across 
these points here. And it's and we're getting that density in certain spots based on how how are these uh, these have been arrayed on the x and y. So it's like you can just playing with these few parameters and maybe even applying multiple um, like overlaying uh, graphs, you can really, really, really quickly create quite complex um, surfaces. Anyways, um, here, let's just do a preview. Custom preview, um, swatch, color swatch, change that to light gray. Preview off. And you can see we've already made something quite interesting. And you can increase the complexity even further by multiplying these further and remapping um, in, in different, uh, remapping uh, completely differently. Anyway, so this is a really interesting function of using the graph mapper. Um, but now, so now I'm gonna show you how to do, uh, to use it and create um, like gradients of points. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do first is Disable these guys. Then let's do a make a, um, for example, populate 2D. And also I'm gonna show you, and with this series, the, the purpose of this is to show you what to do when your input is not going to be between zero and one. Because what's really clean about what I just showed you here is that you know these ranges were always giving you a range between zero and one. So it's very clean how it worked through this. But most of the time, you're not going to be working with numbers that are between zero and one. So what you're going to require is another series of remaps. Um, so let's do a deconstruct point to get um, each x, y, and z value for each point. And then, you know, just to uh, simplify it. So what we're going to end up doing is uh, construct constructing a point. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a gradient along the x-axis of point. So right now they're pretty evenly distributed. I mean, it's a random seed, but but I want to have them condensed on this side and condensed on this side. So, and then be very loose in the, in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna maintain their X and Y's, right? So, so I'm going to maintain their X and Y's and manipulate, or sorry, no, I'm gonna maintain their Y and Z and I'm gonna manipulate their X value. So this is gonna require um, a remap. Or first, let's just plunk down our graph mapper. Um, graph types, let's use a Bezier curve again. Let's manipulate this guy, or actually let's do it like that. So we have, um, okay. So let's, now we need to generate a number of evaluate. And so I could, so there's a couple ways to do this. Um, so right, so we need a hundred values. So I could input a hundred into here, like a, a domain, or sorry, a range component with with a hundred here. So this is a hundred, and I could make this, you know, a hundred, and sort of parametrically do it like this. So I could do it like this, and then feed this into here, and then remap it. But what I'm going to show you is something different. So what I'm going to do is uh, first. So what I'm going to be doing is remapping these x values. Um, and so, so the, these are the, now the values to remap. Once again, this is the source domain, which is, it says it's zero to one, but remember these, like I mean right there, 14, uh, 13, 19. So these numbers are not in between zero to one. So we need to first get the bounds. And now this will tell me zero to 19.98. So this will be my new source domain. And what I've found also is you sometimes have to flatten this. For example, if I had multiple um, plots of scattered points, you would probably want to flatten this because you're not gonna wanna get multiple uh, sources for the domain. You're just gonna want one overall one. So this one oftentimes will become flattened. 
And then your target domain is already set to zero to one. So perfect. So then you're gonna input that. So now you're gonna have the series of all these numbers within here. And then on the other hand, we're gonna once again want to remap. And now because you, now they're between zero and one. So once again, now we can just construct a new domain. Uh, oh God, how is that? Back domain, construct domain. Oh no, there's so many of them. Construct domain. Once again, Andrew's spelling fails. And we could actually, so we could construct this domain or we could just use this bounds. I realized that so we could just use this bounds, but we'll all keep this and you know show it between um, 12. Here, let's just do 12 and 12. But we are, we'll keep that and then plug that in. And now once we hide those, we can very quickly see that we're remapping all of those scattered points within that same bounds. And I can also replace that, um, that bounds component, which is the new domain, with a controlled domain. So now they're all 12, but I can stretch and stretch, you know, and I can now do whatever I want with these numbers. And I'm getting a, uh, and I'm getting a consistent uh, workflow. So basically that's gonna be it. I'm trying to keep this one pretty short. Um, it's all about controlling numbers to be between zero and one because you do not want to have to for example if i did not remap these numbers here let's just simulate what that would really let's just say i plug this into there as you can see there let's see what numbers we're going to output it because there are because all of these x values are greater than one so i could go in here and on the x you know change this to be 20 or I think, yeah, I think it was 20 was sort of the maximum. And then I would get it to work. But the second that you changed, you stretched this rectangle, you did anything later, your values would start, you'd start jamming up again. So, so I highly recommend always to remap these numbers there and then make sure once you know, that you don't have this be 20, that this is just one. So, so you always leave these graph mapper in this standard. And this is something that you're going to be used a lot. This, this, um, this chunk is going to be something that is almost like an interchangeable, uh, or actually, you know what, you could even cluster it and, and have this cluster, you know, control C, control V and use it in different um, scenarios. Anyway, so, so there it is. I mean, just super simple stuff. Um, there's a couple, uh, I mean, that's just all the tricks I have with the graph mapper. Um, I highly recommend, you know, exploring around with different types of, uh, of graph types. The Perlin one I find is really nice to actually find like noise, um, randomization. Um, Bezier is always a winner. Um, sign, uh, square root. These are probably the ones uh, I use most. And then Gaussian, you know, a Gaussian blur, another use of the mathematics form of Gaussian. Um, yeah, that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and comment if you'd like me to um, upload any more like detailed tutorial on a single element and how to use it in a better way, like the best practice of using any elements. All right, thank you very much uh, and have a good day.